Contact to the camera up here. Right up here. Right. My hope for the fans is that they can see that people with disabilities can do anything they want. They can go for the moon. You know, Maya herself is a perfect example. She can fight. She can do anything. She can beat the villains up. I guess we'll see exactly what happens in the show, but the audience. Sometimes, you know, we don't, we, I want everybody to know that people with disabilities are just like everybody else. I think it's surreal for a lot of us because as you'll see in the show, a lot of us are not necessarily overlapping, although we're all intertwined. We didn't always get to see each other on set. So I think seeing one another and getting to celebrate what we did, that felt like so long ago and the accomplishment of it being done. We're just all really excited to share it. I think what I find incredibly inspiring is that she's incredibly flawed and she's doing her best and she is trying to figure out how to do that to show up for herself and also those who came before her and her grief. So I think it's just seeing that and seeing her push through it and seeing community and family portrayed in the way that it is in the show which feels authentic and gritty and real. I just am so proud of that. <laughs> The, the energy is so palpable tonight. There's so many indigenous folks everywhere. I think everyone is so excited to finally get an indigenous superhero, anti-hero, somewhere in between, but to have indigenous people and specifically the Choctaw Nation be on such a platform like the MCU is, it's like the inner native geek in me is like freaking out. 
it was really humbling getting to learn ASL. It's such a beautiful community and culture that I haven't necessarily had access to. And, and so to be invited into this space and to, to really take on that responsibility of learning ASL and playing a coda, a child of deaf adults, is it was really important to make sure we got it right. And and I really attribute that to Alakwa Cox, who was so, so patient with us and so talented. And also Douglas Ridloff, who is one of our producers and the ASL master, who really put such specificity. There's Plains Indian Sign Language, there's Simcom, there's um, ASL, there's also signing, de depending on the characters, different proficiency levels. It, it's such a detail that we wouldn't be able to get without somebody being from that community behind the camera. So it's something that I'm really proud of and, and it's something I'm still learning ASL um, even after the show. So yeah, super proud. Determination, um, strength, tenacity, uh, power. Um, I haven't seen what they've done with it all, but um, for me, in my experience, it was really uh, spiritual in, in a sense of connection with ancestors and, and uh, whatever the difficulty, there's access to a way of, of getting through it, you know. And, and I'm hoping that what we'll see is Maya getting back in touch with her essential self that she's been separated from for a long time. Oh my gosh, we've waited for so long to be here and the energy right now is completely buzzing. Everybody seems so excited and so enthusiastic to bring this to life. And um, yeah, I'm just really thankful and really grateful to even be here, you know? To be able to kind of go back to your roots and kind of find out really who you are is something that I was really excited about to be able to do throughout this show. Um, but it's a really big connection point. And also just connecting with your family, being, you know, leaning on the people who you know are always there for you. It's great. Everybody works so hard on this project. It's going to be amazing. I'm very happy. It's good to see everybody's face, too. Yeah, it's really nice. I'm very happy for Alakwa, especially. Yeah. I think it's it would be impossible to not be inspired by Alekwa's performance. And then I guess the character itself. The character is such a powerful woman, you know, it's amazing. You know, the it's all there, you know, her whole story is there. And she's such a unique actress in so many ways, you know, so it's, it's fantastic. I can't imagine them not being just taken on this journey they're going to love. I, could, I mean, I've seen a few of the episodes and I, they're just so good. Oh, there's a lot of anticipation. Uh, there's excitement here, and I really, I'm really excited for people to see this finally. And we get to see it on the big screen. You know, I feel very fortunate to see it on the big screen. Um, yeah, I think people are just waiting to see it. Well, it's it's branching off to a different direction. Also, it's a bit, it's darker and it's more brutal. And you have an amazing cast, and yeah, I think uh, the audience is going to really, you know, it's not what they're expecting to Marvel, and I think it's going to really blow them away. You know, Alakwa Cox, for being the lead in one of her first movies, she is a pro, a champ, and I really want people to see her performance. Uh, she's nothing like the character, but she is a badass. Yeah, she's a badass in real life. But uh, I'm really excited to people to see, see her work, and I think people are going to really be blown away by it. Oh, this is an amazing moment, especially for uh, representation of indigenous peoples in TV and in film, and we've had a great few years with quite a few different shows, and also uh, Maya, or Alakwa Cox, who plays Maya, uh, representing not just the indigenous community, but also the deaf community, uh, as well as the uh, uh, amputee community as well. And uh, we couldn't ask for a better, better uh, person to do that. She's amazing. She's amazing in the show. It was amazing to work with her, and um, it's, a, it's an amazing night for everybody. I, they're just going to see. Uh, they're going to see a, a, a TV show that's from a native perspective, with a native actress as the star, as well as a, again a deaf uh, actress. And I think that the audiences nowadays, with all the streaming services going on, that are are looking for different content. And Echo covers all those bases. This energy is insane. I love this. Um, you know, to be a part of something so monumental and 
at this level is, is so cool. Uh, I, I come from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I grew up in Los Angeles, but I'm from Muskogee's, and so you know, just me being here, it represents something like on a bigger spectrum. <laughs> like, the best thing I've ever experienced in my life. It was really fun, and I really, I really liked it. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's amazing. It's fantastic. It's very it's it's real to be talking about the, the project in the past tense. So uh, you know, I'm very excited to uh, have the the series be shown to the public and and for people to be able to meet Maya Lopez and her family and her community and and Vincent and Kingpin and see all of the great wonderful um, uh, things that we've been working on uh, behind closed doors. Yeah, no, I think one of the, one of the great things about this series is that you know we're not dealing with the fate of the universe, you know, we don't have these huge like cosmic consequences that we're kind of beholden to. And so what that allows us to do is tell a, a deeply human story. Um, and uh, we always knew that that was going to be the, the, the thrust of it. And we knew it was going to be grounded. We knew it was going to be gritty. We knew it was going to be uh, uh, kind of street level. And then the question was always like, how much can we push that envelope? How much can we lean into the grit? How much can we lean into the violence? How much can we lean into the humanity? And and think, you know, Marvel's just been amazing collaborators along the way, and we've it's been a, a amazing uh, partnership. And you know, I think it's it's something that evolved naturally uh, through the storytelling process. I'm very excited for people to meet Maya Lopez. You know, I think I think it's it's definitely a. Um, Right now, as we speak, it's a very exciting time. You know, Lily Gladstone just won the Golden Globe last night for Best Actress, you know, uh, something that's been a long time coming. And then uh, 24 hours later, we're fortunate enough to be here on the red carpet for a premiere of a Marvel series led by an indigenous deaf woman. Um, and so I, I'm just very excited for audiences who aren't native and who aren't deaf to, to have a chance to, to, to um, be a part of the world. We're here tonight and I'm so excited to be here. I'm really excited for the fans to see the show, to see how it all comes together, and especially with deaf representation in these roles, it's gonna be amazing, the Marvel TV show. First of all, I have a script and I read through it to get really an understanding and I work with the director as well one-on-one -on -one, to get a feel of the pace. I analyze each character who will be learning sign language during the show and look at the characters, the actors, the actresses and see if it's going to be an easier process for them or if it's going to be a longer harder process because some for some people it takes longer and so I develop and build on that depending on their pacing I look at the backstory why are you signing so well maybe why is signing a little bit harder for you and then I integrate that with the story so that it makes sense for them when people see them signing and others sign really nice others sign a little sloppier you know there's levels of sign language and I want to make sure I work with each character each actor or actress to connect with that we work together for quite a few months teaching them, designing the language, especially to tailor to them. And on set, if they make any mistakes, I'm the person who kind of edits that, comes back and looks at it to make sure that it's appropriate. Well, I would say, you know, a deaf superhero, that is badass, you know? And there's not just one, we have two superheroes that are deaf now. So I want to see more coming. That's what I'm excited about. It is very exciting tonight. It is exciting that this character represents the first of what we're calling the Marvel Spotlights which is taken from our comics division, where many of the characters that people know and love now started in what was called the Marvel Spotlight, where we were able to take a character who may or may not have been connected to the far-reaching corners of the Marvel Universe, but had an incredible character-oriented emotional story to focus on, and that's what we're doing with Echo. And she had a great standout appearance in the Hawkeye series where you learned a bit of the backstory and a bit of the connection between she and Kingpin. But with this show, we get to go back to Oklahoma to see her family, to see where she came from. And it's really a very good personal story. It's our first TVMA, which we're excited about because we didn't have to pull any punches throughout the whole show. Well, I think the best thing about the show is that uh, all of those groups are speaking for themselves and the writers behind the scenes and the directors behind the camera and the actors on screen um, are all members of that community. So the amount of collaboration was really amazing with members of the deaf community, the hard of hearing community, the Choctaw community. And it really is a story uh, about the Choctaw people and about this hero, Mayo Lopez, um, told by so many members of the, of the actual community. So uh, they, they and this show speaks for itself. 
it's beyond exciting. We've been waiting for years. I mean, we started this back in, I think, November of 2021, and it was filmed in 2022. So to finally have it happening after all of the hard work that everybody put in, you know, to make sure that this came to life, it's beyond exciting. I felt extremely fortunate, not only just working with the Choctaw Nations, but the Cherokee, the Salish. I mean, every single nation that was represented had their own specific representation. So like the Mohawk, I got to literally learn the history from their historians. Instead of just reading it from a book or finding it on the internet, like I actually had, you know, the people of their nations giving me, you know, their own historical stories. So I felt extremely fortunate. I learnt ASL um, for, uh, you know, ECHO, and it was really important for me to be able to, um, for Alakwa to be able to communicate and for me to see her and uh, be able to be there and scaffold her for the work. Um, and, you know, Doug Ridloff was an incredible asset as well. He came in. I used to call him Big Thumb because every take, it wasn't just for performance and technical issues, I would always turn to him and he would put his big thumb out and that I knew that the ASL was perfect. So it was actually really fabulous. It was like there was languages within languages within languages. I always consulted with the Choctaw Nation. There was a number of uh, you know, members of the community that were there. And it was really important to me. My dad's Aboriginal, so it was very important for me to be able to um, make sure that everything I was doing and wanting to do was culturally appropriate. So, you know, again, really proud to have done, gone on that journey and, and I think uh, everyone's going to love the result. Mm. Putting together a really authentic and very thoughtful cast was a challenge and a glorious, wonderful one. We had incredible collaboration from Sydney, from Katrina, from my incredible team, Chris Sarr, Jacqueline McKenzie, Greg Korn. Uh, I think we really put our whole heart into it and we're so happy to get legendary actors like Tantu Cardinal and Graham Greene and, and the rest of the incredibly high level cast with Sean McLarnon, Chasky Spencer. You know who they are. I don't have to tell you every single name, but honestly, every single person person, Debbie Jacobs, every single person that joined the cast felt like a huge win. Um, and it was a really exciting process. Really inspired by complex characters. And uh, Maya Echo is definitely that. Um, there's so many cool facets to her, and we get to see so much of what makes her her uh, in this show. And uh, all of those things combined, plus you know, the, the amazing resources and backing of working on a Marvel project and having all that behind you and that amazing team uh, supporting you all the way, it's, it's, it's been an amazing experience. This character, I think, that maybe some Marvel folks don't know as well, uh, is, is, is so deep and so fascinating and intricate uh, and, and exciting, you know. More than anything, she's awesome.
Well, tonight, of course, the cultural center is about us being able to tell our story as the Choctaw people. It's always been told from different perspectives. And so we get to tell it from our story, from our side and our perspective. So it's not only that, but then our group here has helped with Sydney and them and with Marvel and with Disney to keep everything authentic on the set and to honor our heritage and culture. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate what they do. And here in the cultural center, we're going to be doing some dinners. We're going to do having a reception. Then we're going to have a free screening tonight. So it's just an awesome day and awesome evening. But you know, in Choctaw, we say uh, Chetta is Choctaw. And also we use the word Tushka, which is warrior. And we see Maya as being that warrior for us. Somebody that can go through disabilities and struggle, that, that cannot speak. And But anyway, that's a part of our history. We struggled, come across the Trail of Tears, lost a third of our people. We're still here today and we're extremely proud of it. And to be highlighted again is just awesome. So that's what this all means to us. And I know that's a lot said in a very short time, but it's just an amazing feeling for us. I hope to see our language be spoken on the screen. I mean, I don't know, it just brings me so much joy, so much honor.